There's no man that hasn't stood on the other side of feeling good, thinking of the things he could have had. But seeing things the way they are doesn't keep me out of bars and missing you. I don't feel far from bad. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcast on Davis Community Television, that's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Uverse Menu 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org. Well, today uh, we have a very distinguished guest, uh, international best-selling author, uh, a writer thriller extraordinaire, and as you just heard one of his song, songwriter, composer, and musician <laughs> extraordinaire. Uh, Welcome, Thank John you. Lesquois. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's very nice to, that uh, you are on our show to, today. Um, you have published... Yes. Uh, more than 25... I think 25, but it could be 26. Uh, 25 books. Yeah. At least 15 on yeah. the New York Times bestsellers list. Yes. And your books have been translated into many languages, more languages that we know about. <laughs> I don't think I could even tell you what they all were. <laughs> and but, you're world famous. Well, you know, <laughs> in a manner of speaking, yes. Actually, your last book, uh -huh. The Keeper, uh -huh. just came out last May, mm -hmm. and I did, uh, I did go to the Avid Reader for your book event, mm -hmm. but I must confess that I didn't hear or even listen to anything you were saying, because I kept thinking, who is this man? <laughs> what fuels his passion, yeah. his work, his many talents? Mm -hmm. uh, where does it, all this come from? Uh, oh, your it, memories. It, it, <laughs> who are you? Who am I? Who are you? I'm a mystery wrapped in an enigma. <laughs> uh, you know... I don't know. Uh, I like to think of myself as just a regular guy who, who found a career later in life. Uh, I mean, I always wanted to be a writer. I, always, I was always creative in the sense that I wrote songs and learned some music and, and you know, sang for a living for a while. Uh, and I just really always hated day jobs is what happened. I went, I mean, I did every day job in the world. I've been, a, you know, an account executive and an advertising guy and a fundraiser. I've been in a lot of offices. An eclectic an background. An eclectic then. background. Yes, and uh, I understand from reading your many bios mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you were encouraged uh, in the seventh grade when you yeah. wrote uh, an essay, that's probably a political what's, essay. I know, that's what started it all. Yeah. My, my teacher, Mrs. Ballou, in Ralston Intermediate School in Belmont, gave the whole class an essay to write, and I had never been turned loose with a pen before, or paper, you know, or paper. And uh, she said, "We're going to write an essay on what is democracy." And I was an idealistic young, you know, twerp, and I sat down and and wrote about three pages just from the bottom of my heart about all of the cliches you can imagine about democracy. But I put them all in a you know in a nice order, I suppose, and I I wrote it up, and and she. Uh, she was very happy with it, and she, in fact, uh, submitted it to my local newspaper, uh, who printed and it. Who printed it? So I got a whole big page of me with, you know, like floral garlands around the whole thing. And, <laughs> you know, it was heady stuff for a seventh grader. So I decided, you know, this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Um, you, um, uh, what is your first memory? Wow, you know, with all the interviews I've had, I've never had anybody ask me that question. <laughs> Well, I'm very interested in That's that. a very interesting question. Um, my first memory was definitely on Rice Boulevard in um, Houston, Texas. I was born in Houston. You were born in Houston. You're yes. a Texan. I'm a Texan. Where's your hat? I left it down at the <laughs> and office. And I left that at the home. Uh, so anyway, I, I remember my mother coming in, and I remember my sister Patricia had a pink bow in her hair. This is really my first memory. And 
She came into our bedroom and picked me up out of the bassinet or crib or whatever I was in. I was only one and a half or two years old. And we went outside to the street, and I remember looking up and down the street, and across the street was my friend Stevie Mayu, who was also a baby. And that's all I remember. It's just this snippet, but it's clear as a bell. It's like a... And it's pretty uh, good. Uh, that, uh, I was considering two. you were I was two. two. Yes. Yeah. The next real memory I have was my very first day when we moved to Levittown, Long Island, New York. I was about four then. And the first thing that happened, I'd never lived up with a place with a stairway. And I fell down the steps on the first day there, and I hit my chin on every step. Bam, 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 bam. Oh. 14 times going down the steps. That's my next memory. And you survived. Yeah, it was good, yeah. So there's, a, 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 there's something to be said about these two memories. They're diametrically uh, opposite. One is way. just peaceful and serene, serene and the and other, the other one, is uh, agonizing yes. and painful. Isn't it's this just life? Like, it's just like life, right? Life. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. So tell us more about you as a person growing up. The, did you have a difficult uh, childhood? No, I had the... I had a really wonderful childhood. I mean, I, I, I think I put the lie to the whole cliche that you have to have an agonized childhood to become any kind of creative person. Well, only if you're a French writer. Oh, uh, well, I'm less <laughs> quoi. You know, I mean, you know, aside the Texas part, I could do have the French thing going, you know, that's it's my It's a very last interesting name. name, by the way. Yeah, we'll uh, get to that. Is it, is it a uh, Cajun name? No. No, no, it's a French name. It's a French name. Yes. It's spelled in a strange it's way. So, it's the weirdest name ever. Here's what happened. It, actually, this was written up in, in Barbara Tuckman's book, A Distant Mirror. Oh. There was a, the French Robin Hood in the 14th century. Yes. Was a guy named Crocar. Yes. C-R-O-Q-U-A-R-T. Yes. His followers were Lay Crocar. That's it. They dropped the QU. That's my name. How interesting. So it really doesn't mean anything by itself. It's just, no. uh, it, just it, a name that nobody can pronounce. Yes. And no one uh, really remembers. Yes. So it's the worst name in publishing. Well, it, it, it is. Yes, um, it, it is. It is in a way, but I'm glad you kept it. I'm uh, not so glad. Uh, no, you're not? Well, are you going to come let me just with tell you a little name? anecdote. Yes. Let me tell you an anecdote. Yes. First okay. of all, repronounce your name, please. Les Quoi. Les, Les Quoi. Quoi. More qua. The opposite of more qua. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, here I am in Evanston, Illinois, back in 2003. I've already had about five bestsellers, and I'm going to a book signing. And I get to this bookstore, and there are two library tables full of books piled up, and I'm thinking, this is great. The only problem is all the books are written by John Le Carré. <laughs> this is a true story. This is a pathetic way to... You know, get to a bookstore after you've just flown 2,000 miles and, and being put up in a nice hotel and they drive you there in a limo and you get there. It's like there's everything but Klieg lights there and it's and for a different guy. Illinois. This is in Illinois. Yeah. But it's happened in other places. Trust so me. what happened? What did you do? I'd like to say that I swept the books off the table in a rage <laughs> and killed the bookstore owner. But instead, I just said, maybe you've got a few of my books that I can sign here. You know, I'd be glad to sign Le Carre's, but, you know, I'd prefer to sign mine. So, That's a wonderful story. It's a great story. Yes. It's, yes. again, that, that great pain associated yes. with great, you know, yes. other Well, stuff. at least your first name is not Jean. Because God, that, would that, be would, G that would be the end. All the time. I right. do have a friend, and his name is John. Jean. Jean. Mm -hmm. And Miss Jean is what he gets most of the time. Yeah, sure. And uh, he doesn't even look like a woman, so yeah. it must be very, very difficult. It would be hard. Uh, but the, yeah, it, it, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So tell us more about you. I well, know you're a very happy man. I oh, know the that. question was, how was my childhood? My childhood was really happy. I have a. Uh, I have six brothers and sisters, so I come from a big Catholic family. Yes. We grew up in the Bay Area mostly, we, Texas, then traveling around in the East a little bit. And then by the time I was nine or 11, I think I got to California. You and sound so like Bay a Area military got, child. My father was military. Oh, that's why in, you moved so much. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So yes. he was in, in the Army when I was born in Houston. My sister was born in San Antonio because he was in the Army. We then he then became a civilian for a year or two, and then the Korean War started. Yes. So he was an ROT instruct, ROTC instructor at Fordham University in New York, and didn't have to go to war, which was good because there were five of us by that time. Yes. Um, but then all through you know grade school and high school, I was kind of um, you know boringly happy. Oh, well, that's nice. It was great. That's and, nice. You know, I I feel. Uh, 
I feel like my childhood was really everything you could want it to be. Does your childhood come into your books? Often? Well, I did have a sister who died. Oh. Okay, so that was a oh, tragic part. Uh, she had a plastic bag death. Oh. And she was six months old, and it was horrifying. Oh. It was bad. How old were you? I was in third grade. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And that tore the family up. But, I mean, it didn't, it didn't ruin my whole childhood. I didn't mean to bring up no, sad memories. No, sad memories are part. Yeah. I mean, you ask if it's part of my work. Yes. yes. Dismas Hardy, my main yes. character. Yes, of course. He lost a baby at the age of seven months. So, so I'd have to say it informs all of these books. Yes. Yes. And he goes back and he's, he goes to that child's grave at least twice in the series, you mm -hmm. know, just to sit and yeah. pray. So... You know, not to make things heavy, but yeah, that, of course, influenced me greatly. Yes. Um, but beyond that, in high school, I was, you know, I was popular and happy. And, and in college, you know, basically things fell apart, but it was the 60s. Yes, of course. Where and did you go to college, I went to I Cal. Ask? Well, I went to four colleges. Oh. In four years. You I didn't went, like any of them? Well, no, it was money. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was money, basically. I started at Cal Santa Cruz in 67, yes. 66. I lasted one quarter before I ran out of money. Even though I was working at McDonald's as a manager oh. and all of that, I just ran out of money. So then I went to the College of San Mateo for the next semester. Then I went to USF, because, University of San Francisco, because they had promised me a scholarship. When I got there, it turned out it was a loan, but oh well. I was there and I didn't want to get drafted, so I stayed in. Yes. And But by that time, I was pretty well done with you know, Catholic schools and doing all that kind of stuff. And I decided I was going to go to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So I went to Cal Berkeley and, and spent the last two years there. It, was it almost too late for the revolutionary? No, it was no, right in the middle of it. It was right in the middle of Every yes. single quarter that I was there, they closed the college. They closed the because school. Of the because of the Because of riots. And yes, yeah. yes. And so it was it a very, you? very... Well, yeah, it affected me. We had a... Um, we had a creative writing class at my apartment because we couldn't be on campus. They closed the campus. And one of the uh, one of the nights, we had a guy come in with shotgun pellets. Oh. Been shot by the police because there was curfew in Berkeley. I know. I mean, it was a very, very bad time. It's uh, and that's, that, that's the time during which time I got pretty radicalized. Not, not I don't think, as bad as some other Berkeley people. But uh, I got, got a little bit radical in thinking that, for example... Um, you know, there were other things to think about in life. I mean, it was the whole Vietnam era, and it was really, it made me a much more serious person. Much, and uh, you had reason to. Well, and I published a poem about Kent State, you know, yes, in, in the Daily Yes, terrible Cal. photograph. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and it, again, that was one of those big, complete, bordered page, you know, publications. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say anybody would have taken me seriously as a writer at that time, but... I was already writing songs and trying to express myself, you know, yeah, yeah. personally. What, uh, how did you feel about the civil rights movement? Uh, I was essentially, I would say I was a centrist left guy. Uh, yes. You know, not right wing, not left wing, but kind of in the middle and just thought everybody was kind of overreacting and pretty silly. Yeah. Um, but there were a lot of issues that you couldn't overreact to. They were so serious, and, and those I took a lot more seriously. I mean, like Kent State. Who's for the good, who's for the National Guard in that scenario? Nobody. Nobody. You know, nobody. I mean, they made no. a mistake. They, they overreacted. People. Right. They were. So afraid. that's what I reacted yes. to. Is the, is the overreaction yeah. more than anything else? Yeah. And I do, I resented because I was paying for my own education. I resented the fact that school closed every quarter. Yes. So it affected you greatly. Yeah. yeah. And if I, by the way, got out of school, I'd get drafted. I mean, it was a whole it, it was era. A, it was a very, very difficult era yeah. for, for the United States. Of course, we forget that uh, these days. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean it's, it, it's the same. But we've been insulated from it. Sen desensitized, perhaps. Yeah. Desensitized, but also insulated because the right. draft is no longer right, that in, helps. Uh, yes, in vigor, so right. in force. Uh, in, uh, um Let's talk about romantic things. Okay. You're very happily married. Very much so. And you have two beautiful children. I do. Where did you meet your wife? My wife. <laughs> did she like you at first? Well, we have an interesting story. My wife was my little sister's college roommate at UC Davis. Ah. And, uh, you know, with a big family, that meant there was 11 years of difference between us. Yes. And uh, my, my little sister, Catherine... 
uh, decided that she was going to set me up with one of her friends. Oh, nice. It was great. But it wasn't Lisa. <laughs> so she had this whole dinner set up. We were going to be have this romantic dinner, and she was going to turn the table every 15 minutes as though we were on a you know rotating restaurant. Very romantic, really cool. And the person she hired to kind of help her, not hired, but asked to help her with this dinner was Lisa. <laughs> so here I am talking to this other woman, and I, there wasn't a lot of chemistry. Oh, she was a nice person, but, you know, it was just like nice person. It wasn't Meanwhile, it. Lisa is, you know, coming out and serving a salad and serving me this and that. And I'm going, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And so I said, well, you know, I pr basically I'd prefer her. But uh, she, <laughs> so was not, you... she was not on the menu. So <laughs> I just let that all go for a minute. And then it didn't go perfectly well because after dinner, my sister wanted me to sing some songs. So I sang some songs and Lisa fell asleep. So I said, well, this is really working well. But then a couple of weeks later, she called me up because Lisa was going to school in Virginia and they wanted to have one last weekend in California together on the beach. So they flew down, they stayed at my house, crashed at my house, rode to the beach. And that was we it? We just stayed up all night talking. I mean, we literally stayed up the entire night, never went to sleep. And by the next day, I was in love with her. And our 30th wedding anniversary is this September 2nd. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Yes, so it was a quick thing. You got married rather quickly. Well, we, we, I think we fell in love rather quickly. I asked her to marry me 10 days later. She said no because she's smarter than I am. Yes. And uh, so about a year and a half later, we actually got married. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And what brought you to Davis? Well, another little bit of, you know, I mean, the Chinese say, may you lead an interesting life. Yes. And they mean it as a curse. <laughs> You know, I have, I have to, had an interesting life. Uh, you, you have indeed. Yes. Uh, the, the, you know, just a, a quick uh, interjection here. Uh, someone mm -hmm. a while ago uh, said that you are a captivating storyteller in person no. as well as on page. So I see that he's right. So well, carry on, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> well, how do we get to Davis was really pretty interesting because I was a, my, my work schedule in Los Angeles, we were living in L.A., and my work schedule was grueling. It really was. I mean, I was... You are writing. No, no, my whole work schedule. I you, was writing in the morning from 6 to 8, and then I had a full-time day job as a word processor in a big law firm. Oh, my goodness. And then... How boring that can be. Boring beyond belief. And then I also went around the big buildings in downtown L.A. when I was done and did piecemeal typing work until oh. 11 o'clock at night. So my day was from 6 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. Unsustainable. And I did it for six years. Oh, <gasps> I did it for six years. You, you, you. And at the end of the six years, I just happened to go body surfing one because I had to do something to get out. So I went body surfing at Seal Beach. And the next morning, I woke up with an earache. Oh. And by later in the day, I had a very bad headache and a fever. And by the middle of the night, Lisa packed me up because I was delirious. And she took me to the doctors with a five-month-old and a 19-month-old in her arms. Oh. And the doctor said, you got to get those to somebody who can take care of him because he's going to die in two hours. What was... What was... I had spinal meningitis. <gasps> I had... Viral. I, advanced. Viral. Adv bacterial, thank God. That's why thank I'm alive. Thank God, yes. My yeah, sister so was, had viral, mm -hmm. but she recovered. Well, that's good. But I... It was terrifying. Yeah, well, I was in a coma for 11 days. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was harder on Lisa than it was for me because she was, of course, of course conscious. We're... Yes. I was just sleeping, but yeah. I was out for but 11 days. because of antibiotics, they could give you... 90 open. million units a day. I smell like a mushroom for, you know, the next year. John. But, but really, that was it. So anyway... I haven't seen anything like that in your interviews. Well, we haven't talked about it too much. That's I mean, other people don't really talk. They talk about books and stuff. This yes. is a personal interview. That's great. So anyway, I was... Uh, when I got, came out of the coma, um, I, went, I tried to go back. I did go back to work. But, you know, since I had the bad grace to recover when the prognosis was going to be death, my office manager hired three full-time people to do my job. Grudgingly. No, she was trying to cover her neck, you know. Yes. And, but I came back, and so the welcome was not overwhelmingly happy. And I said, you know, I think we're about done. I've worked here six years. It's time to give my all to writing. So... We packed up, basically. Lisa was, you know, this was home to Lisa in college. Yes. And my, sis my sister and two of my brothers had gone to Davis. Yes. So we said, let's go to Davis. We picked up, just <laughs> moved. And, and we are the 
richer for it. Oh, well, to right. have you here. Well, good. It's wonderful. I'd like to switch to your, um, as I mentioned earlier, you're a musician. Yeah. You uh, sing beautifully. Um, you have uh, published, no, I mean it. I'm not just throwing <laughs> you flowers. And uh, your songs, you compose your songs yeah. and you write your music, of yes. course, and you play the guitar. And uh, you have uh, so far published, I believe, two collections, two albums. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey and Roses. Country. Yes. My Houston background. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I particularly like the, uh, the Southern uh, mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, where you allude to your Creole. Oh, or yeah. Creole. Songs uh, of the South. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Songs of the South. Right. What did I say? Something else. That's yes. all right. Close enough. And, and then, uh, of course, Whiskey and Roses. Roses. Yeah. Uh, very moving song, First Letter Home. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's fantastic. So, Thank you. have you ever try to choose one for the other or one pays the bill Un more until than the other? Until I was 30 years old I was a full-time musician. That's what I did. I had a band called Johnny Capo and his real good band and it was a five-piece band and we played in the Bay Area and we played almost every night. We played seven days a week for and three years. And you loved it. I loved it. Loved but it. at my 30th birthday I just said that's it I'm done. I'm not gonna make it as a rock and roll person. You know that's a kind of a good wake-up call when you turn 30. And well, I just stopped. Is, I and just you said, had a family, of course. No. No, no you didn't, didn't have, have a family. family. Sorry. But the great news was, you know, <clears throat> I, could, I, I felt I could do other things. I started writing right away. Um, I didn't get published right away, but my first book that I wrote I, I actually wound up winning a literary award. Oh, yes. So it gave me hope yes. that I could continue to do this. Yes, and even though remind me your ti the title of that book. Was it, was, it Ophelia? It was Sunburn. That? Sunburn. I've Summer. read that book. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's very different. Yeah. Very well, different. you know, even though I want to know more about John Desquois, the man, there's so much of, of your life is uh, your books yeah. that I wanted to ask you, um, as I said, uh, you've written uh, 25 books. and yeah. Fantastic. Your, your characters are... Uh, beautifully done and, and beautifully also. But I wanted to ask you, if there was a book, I mean, which book you would want to write? Not rewrite, mm -hmm. write again. You mean go back and do a, do a book over? Yes. You know, I think the process of getting to a finished book is severe enough that that almost never happens. I feel like uh, all the books no, but are done. What if? What if? What if? Two wonderful words. If, what if? Okay, if I'm going to do a book over, um, I think the book that I would do over would be The Vig, which was my second book, second Dismas Argument. Could you tell me uh, just <clears throat> quickly? Well, it's a story. It's, the problem is, if there's a problem, I mean, it's been on, you know, it's still in print after whatever it is, 28 years, so I don't think the problem's that large. No. But I didn't know Dismas Hardy, and I, I had to get to know him in the book. And when, by the time I finished the book, he was a little bit more the guy I got to know that he became later. But all through the book, he wasn't. And so, to me, he's a little bit of an immature character I in see. the finished book. I and see. I'd, if I had it to do over again, I would have made it much more, made him more of a heroic person and given him a little bit more depth. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, do you think your books first? No. You just go along. I'm very much a scene-by-scene scene guy. You know, I mean, you're supposed to, in, in theory, write an outline for your books and, you know. So you're sort of a script writer, but sort of like a, an extraordinaire script well, writer. Well, the whole extraordinaire thing I don't know about, but... Uh, no, I'm not a script writer. I'm, I'm a scene writer. Hmm. I just go scene by scene. I try to think of interesting things in every scene. That seems like a kind of a dumb approach on some levels, but on the other hand, you can cover a multitude of sins by just writing interesting stuff. Yes, of course. And it's a step at the time. It's a step at a time. So and then it gives it, you... It becomes a, li a little bit holistic, that everything kind of follows from stuff that, you know, yes. you just you put it in there not knowing exactly why, other than it's kind of cool. Yes. You know, I 
you probably know that I'm going to bring it up. Cool. But uh, betrayal. Yeah. It's, I don't know you're going to bring that one up. Okay. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's still extremely timely. Yes, Especially it is. now. Yes, it is. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because of all the... the Everything that happened in Iraq. Uh, yes. Yeah, hello. It's starting all over it again. It sure is. And can you... Can you tell me? Well, this is this is a book about Iraq, and mm -hmm. it's also a thriller, of course, and yeah. uh, it takes place on the streets of Baghdad, yes. basically. Um, why did you write this book? Because you were angered by the situation in Iraq. You know, yes, partly. That's a good question, but really, you, I, I've written a lot of my books because my publishers say. Let's expand your readership. You're already doing great. <laughs> Let's go for the military audience. Or your publisher what, or your editor? Publisher is my uh, editor. Oh, is your editor? Right. Sorry. But yes. my, you know, never they say, they're never happy, aren't they? Well, they want you to always be fresh and new and totally different, except extremely the same. <laughs> An impossible task. <laughs> of course. But you have mastered it. Well, I, I wrote about five books in a row where my publishers were trying to increase my sales. Yes. And they said, why don't you, you know, get a little bit younger? Why don't you write, well, you know, a, male, a sexy young male guy and he can be the protagonist. So I invented yes. Wyatt Hunt. Yeah. And Wyatt Hunt, I wrote The Hunt Club. It did very well. They said, you know, that went pretty well. Why don't you do now maybe a female protagonist? Yes. I said, wow, that's a challenge. Okay. Yeah. So I wrote The Suspect. It was the American Authors Association Novel of the Year. Oh, it's I mean, fantastic. It's, fantastic. You know, it was great. It was Gina yes. Roke, a totally new lead character as a woman. So then I finished that one and they said, yeah, but you know, we haven't really hit the exact sweet spot yet. We're going there, but how about if you write a military thriller? I'm going, gee, my knee. Okay, guys, what am I? Push a button and, you know, it comes out like a donut? I and mean, it seems to come out like Well, a I don't know. It just, anyway, that's what happened. We're just about out of time. Well, that went fast. It went very fast. Yeah. And I wish we had another two hours instead of just a half an hour. Cool. So thank you so much for being on our show. If um, Say one word about this interview. Yes. One word. Just one adjective, one word. Friendly. You're good. I'm glad. <laughs> because you know what? Friendly doesn't always happen in interviews. No, I know. And especially, it's wonderful. Especially European interviews, because you are a celebrity in Europe, I guess. Uh, sometimes. Are you a celebrity here? Uh, of course you really. are. You know, Small there's town. different. Well -known, Small town, well-known celebrity. Yeah. Well-known is different from yeah. being a celebrity, right. isn't it? Yes. But uh, um, thank you so much. Glenn. My great pleasure. Les thank Qua. you. <laughs> Keep writing. I will. You're a wonderful author and a wonderful person. Okay. Um, and thank you all for watching today. Uh, I'm Lynn Weaver. You've been watching in the studio. Uh, if you'd like to stream this episode and perhaps take a look at some of the other interesting programs that we offer, just log on to DCD, dctv.davismedia.org. From all of us here at Davis Media Access, technical crew, uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Oh,